Hello and welcome to the breakdown of this edit, which I made in DaVinci Resolve. It's broken up into three parts and using the timestamps, you can skip to any part that you like. I go over how I did all the motion graphic scenes, which has some 3D elements as well. If you want to watch this edit with the original music I chose, you can do so by watching them on my Instagram as well as TikTok via the links in the description below. Enjoy. Okay, so normally this is how I set up most of my comps, basically like this, with some transforms here, with some other things here at the end. And with MoGraphs, usually you build out your scene first, and then you animate things afterwards. So I'm going to show you how I built this out here. First, I added this grey background here, and then found this PNG image from the internet, made it blurry, and then added it to where I wanted it to be. I also added this halftone polka dot effect here. Then I went and added the Miles Morales here with my logo and my name, and the Spidey Sense how I made that was basically by having a background here. Using a polygon node then I drafted a rough shape of how I wanted it to be. Then basically duplicated that and positioned it where I wanted it to be. Then I went and also duplicated that and I made an instance node for both of these and I had the pivot point here to be at the center which we will get back to why I did that later. Then I found this image here of Miles on the internet and I masked him out with the polygon node here and then added a nice shadow onto him. Now with the music I chose in this section the lyrics are another Saturday and I had them appear in these speech bubbles here and I made these a while ago but I thought I would repurpose them just for this because I feel like it matches the aesthetic and it just makes it seem unique and I do have a link in the description where you can actually download this and use it for any of your projects so if you go ahead and download that a zip file should appear and once you've unzipped it it should look like this and it basically comes with the font I used as well as this document here and basically all you need to do is right click select all copy and then drag that in and just paste it and you should have this. I won't go too into detail on how I created this. You can play around with that yourself, but I will show you how you can use it for your own use. So say, for example, you didn't want the speech bubbles here to be in this specific order. You can use any of these instance nodes here and move the speech bubble around to have it in your desired position. Now, let's say the shadows are off and you don't want them to be in this side. No problem. Just go over to this node here. And on the top, you can see that there are different versions and I've pre-made all the rotations that you could possibly need. So let's say like I want it over to the right here and to do the same thing for this. And there you go. So now we have basically our scenes built out. I'm going to show you here how I animated everything. So with this motion here, you can see all I did was have miles scale from this position. And I just basically use a transform node to do that with my graph looking like this. So basically it has a slow point and then has a fast point and then to end it off, it slows down. And with that too, I also made this like slow motion jittery effect here. Like you can see where miles and Gwen are sort of shaking, but it's like stop motion. And to have that effect, I just added a camera shake with these levels here. And then I added a stop motion here and made the frame repeat to be four. So it gives this sort of animated shake effect. Now, as I said earlier, with the spidey sense things that pop out of Miles' head, I made the pivot point to be in the center because if I just change the values of the size here, it is a lot easier to scale it up and down rather than using the individual transforms. And once I liked the way that the scene was built out, to get this trippy sort of effect here with the purple lines that appear, I basically used the ellipse node here and I animated the width and the height to give this effect. I then wanted to add another one, but I was too lazy to reanimate everything and tweak it slightly. So I basically just added a duplicate node. I made the copies to be two and had the time offset set here. So as you can see, it sort of lags behind it. This is the second one and this is the original one here. Now with Gwen here, I basically did the same thing with Miles. And to get this effect here where she appears, I added a rectangle mask and changed the values in every two frames, which gives the swiping effect here. Had these settings here, which gave this pixelated effect then animated the blend so the effect would disappear on a certain frame and then once I decided and I liked how everything looked I used these transforms here to act as a camera to animate these fluid movements and the reason I use different transforms is you can layer the transforms on top of each other rather than having the animation stop and start in a certain frame you can layer them on top of each other and have it be one fluid movement so once I animated the camera with using the transforms to add an extra flare I added this glowing effect here sort of like light seeping out from the bottom i achieved this effect then by just adding a background node and then having a rectangle node here and changing the soft edge to be 0.8 so it looks like there's light seeping from underneath and in the beginning here to get this eye opening reveal i did the same thing with the purple ellipses i just animated the scale of the length and the width and finally to get the blurry effect i used diffuse gamma which is far better than the stock blur that they give 
you can find diffuse gamma in reactor as well hopping back into the edit page here to get this effect in the sequence i did i could have realistically did some of these bits in all one fusion comp but then i decided to just do them in separate adjustment layers and the way i got sort of this focus camera effect here which sort of pans in and sort of lags a little bit is I made a rectangle by just using the rectangle node deselecting the invert and solid and changing the border width I also then copied and pasted it again and changed the values and made it subtract Originally, it should be merged like this, but I made a subtract, take away from the original rectangle, which was this one here. And then I copied and pasted this first one and I did the same thing and I made it subtract and it gives this sort of effect here. I made it orange, as you can see, and I added a dent node here to make it have like this sort of fish eye lens effect. Add an exponential glow, which you can also find in reactor. And with the transform here, I basically had it start off outside of the scene and then just slowly pan into the scene. And with the flickering that you can see here that it does, I basically went into the merge of this and animated the blend with the graph looking like this. So I basically changed the values from one to zero multiple times and then just duplicated it and it gave this effect here. Moving on, I added this solid color and instead of making it normal, I changed it to soft light, which gives this sort of pre-flash effect and then duplicated it. And then I just had this to be white. On this adjustment clip here, I basically just had it zoom in. So it was originally normal, but I just made it zoom in. Inside of this fusion clip here, I added this Polaroid here, which drops down and sort of folds out, which I've explained how to do in this tutorial. So you can just go ahead and watch that and learn how I made this effect. So first of all, I changed the saturation with this brightness and contrast. I had a flicker as well as a glow. And to go ahead and make this camera focus crosshair, I went and added an ellipse, deselected the invert and the solid and moved the border width up. And I copied the same steps for these two here. But instead of ellipses, they are rectangles. I went again and added the same effect with the light seeping through from the bottom. Added a film grain to make it grainy, you can tell here. And then with this camera flash is I added a rectangle and I changed the values here from it being solid to invert with these two keyframes here and then change the level for it to be one and then zero here for it to disappear which gave this flashing and then to top it off i added this vignette from the edges here you can see the edges here are a little bit darker and i did that with a background and another ellipse and i had these values here and then to have a nice transition into the next scene i basically made it fade to black and i did that by having a background and having the alpha start from zero from my desired point at the end here it's almost faded out So this scene here is pretty similar to the last one that we just looked at. I basically went through the steps and processes of just adding everything into one comp and then animating it afterwards. For example here, I just have a group on its own for just the particles that I used. And the only bit of animation I did was regarding the bend with the Polaroid as well as the camera animating as well. And it's just a simple linear animation. At the end here, you see that first effect that I used for Gwen in our first scene that I did. And it's quite literally just the same effect. Now, the reason I have these two here like this is because it transitions in well into our next scene inside of this compound clip here i have of miles it's quite simple compositing i did here i basically rotoed him out and then placed him on top of our background which i had previously blurred to give more focus on miles here then i went and just added the particles to top it off and then i did the exact same for this next clip here then on top of that i added simple transitions in these adjustment layers here using the transforms i believe this one is scaling out as you can see it sort of scales out which then transitions nicely into this clip which i have it scaling from in to out and then swiping over to the right which transitions nicely nicely into this clip here and I then repeated the same process for the last one then on top of that in this adjustment layer I created this sort of Game Boy overlay I did this by again adding the light seeping through then I created the border just by blurring it soft glowing added a transform to make it bigger and then using the rectangle I cropped it out which gave this effect then I also added a background layer here with a rectangle and decreased the alpha I believe to give it the sort of see-through box effect then I basically repeated the same process with the second layer here to create this section here I just basically went through the processes of just adding text with glows i created this triangle here by adding a background with a polygon node and i roughed outlined the shape here i duplicated it and flipped it around with the two images here of miles and gwen i basically copied and pasted from that first clip that we looked at and added it to here i scaled it down added a mosaic blur with these settings here and i left it as that i forgot to mention that i used this overlay explosion to have a nice transition into the next one as well as to add a nice finishing touch i used the star particles here to give it a shiny effect and again for our next fusion composition i used the exact same process which i used for our first comp and our second comp 
This one has a lot less things in the comp itself, but as far as the camera movement and anything else, it is exactly the same. Other than one thing, which is the glitch effect, and I'll show you exactly how I did that. So I created this comic book text bubble and I keyframed the text changing. So on this frame, it says young love. To the next frame, it says in the pool, which matches the lyrics to the video I used. And I basically created this glitch effect here by going into the effects library templates and then in the effects here we have the digital glitch which i just dragged in i just went through and keyframed the points of the glitches and had it then return back to normal at the end of the comp here i added a dent node to give it sort of a fish eye effect and you can see the before and after it just has a subtle effect which i liked Now in this part of the edit is quite simple. I basically had Gwen swinging from one side of the screen to another, which transitions into a clip of Miles like sort of looking for her, which I thought was quite nice. Then I added a two framer to transition it into our next clip, which is just black and then red here, which matches the sort of blurry swipe from Miles's hand. And then I did this sequence here by rotoing out Gwen. You can see there's two Gwens in the scene here. There's one here and then there's one here. I rotoed the beginning of her spinning and had the background fade into the original clip that I used, which I rotoed Gwen out from which has this nice transition. I added a couple of one framers here, as you can see, which is just different colors, which transitions into this adjustment layer here. And it's basically the same thing as all of my other comps. I went through the steps and processes of just adding each individual thing and positioning them where I think looked the best. In our last and final comp, I did something a little different, which I haven't tried before, but I think came out pretty well. So I'll just use this first bit here of Gwen to explain how I broke it down and I applied the same exact effects for the last two. So starting off, I had my main background here, which again, using the halftone polka dot effect, which gives it more of that comic book feel. I added a border onto it. Then I wrote it out Gwen and just placed it on top of the whole thing. I went and then added a shadow onto it. And it's as simple as that. I repeated the same process for this other one here with Miles, where I added everything onto the background as well as the border and the triangle, and then just simply added a roto on top of that. And then again, repeated the exact same process for this last one here. So once I had everything built out, I went and animated using the transforms. For each individual bit that comes out, I added a transform there just for the camera zooming out, which then helped reveal all of them here. And then in the edit page, I added a shake as well as this black border here and a couple of one framers, flashes and other things. And I did the exact same couple one framers to help transition it into our last clip, which if you watch the whole edit with the music, this section here, I think fits in perfectly with what the lyrics are.